Hello everybody, welcome to this week's Easter Assembly. As you can see, I'm at the church, I'm in the foyer, and what I'm going to do is walk around and give you a little tour of the church and try and explain one or two things, and then I'm going to tell you an Easter story. Okay, this is the main hall of the church. As you can see, a lot of the chairs are stacked because of the COVID. Normally, these are the chairs that we sit on, these nice, comfortable chairs when we meet. And as you can see, the church is sat out, spaced out, with the two metres COVID restrictions. And we hope that will end soon so that we can all come back together. And here is the main worship area where we meet on a Sunday morning. In this cupboard here is some of the vicar's things they put round their necks and decorative materials for the, um, for the uh, altar. There's candles and things in there. That is the recording desk where the PA is operated from and where services are recorded and they go online on Zoom and uh, Facebook. And that's a little worship area where the worship group um, lit, plays songs and hymns. There's a piano, people bring their own guitars. There's actually a guitar there, look, and a PA system. And uh, this is called the lectern, where most people stand and lead the service from there. And that's where I'll be recording my assembly from in a few minutes. But the vicar stand at the front here and lead the service, or I do when I lead the all-age service once a month. And this is the altar, it's called the altar, where behind there the vicars prepare the Holy Communion when that's given out on Sundays, which is the bread and which is the wine, which is given and it remembers Jesus' Last Supper with his disciples, which was on the Thursday, the day before Good Friday. And uh, that's probably all I want to show you, I think. People make banners. Look, some people are very clever. Someone from church has made that banner. It says, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-faithfulness and self-control. They're good values, aren't they, for a church? And that's something that is said in the Bible. And there's a big cross there. So I think now, oh, this, better to explain what this is. Anybody know what this is? Have you ever been to a christening where a baby has water on its head? It's a special service where babies are, are welcomed and give God his praised and thanked for the birth of the baby and the baby is prayed for and has a little cross put on its head with the water. So there's water in there when there's a christening and the vicar puts a sign of a cross on the forehead of the baby. And families and friends come and they often have a party afterwards. Anyway, hopefully, if you've got any questions about any of those things, hopefully in the future I'll be able to come in and see you face to face and I can answer them. But I think now we'll go on to our story. Well, welcome to our Easter Assembly talk. Have you noticed how everything is bursting into life at the moment? The flowers are opening, the trees are growing new leaves, and perhaps blossom as well. Have you got any trees in your garden or flowers that you can see opening up? I have a, um, I have a tree in my garden it's a, it's, it's a nice tree with, it's called a cherry blossom tree and it has really nice pink blossom and it's all coming out and it looks really nice. What about the birds? Are you hearing the birds singing in the morning? All these are signs that we're at a certain season. And you know what season it is, don't you? It's spring. Well, one spring day, like today, Teddy went out into his garden. He wanted to play, but he didn't have anybody to play with. Has that ever happened to you, where you wanted to play with someone and there was no one there? Or 
There was, but they were doing something else. How did you feel? It made poor old Teddy sad. Teddy had quite a big garden and he walked around it thinking about the fact that he was feeling a bit lonely. He looked at the flowers. His favourites were the daffodils because they were bright yellow. And as he was thinking about and looking at these bright yellow daffodils, which reminded him of the sun, along came one of his white hens, because he had hens in his garden. White hen, white hen, will you play with me, asked Teddy. Oh no, clucked the hen, sorry, I have no time to play. It's nearly Easter. I need to go and lay some eggs. And off she went, running into the hen house. Teddy was really disappointed. He'd asked someone to play and they were too busy. Teddy was sad, but then he started thinking about the hen and the hen laying eggs, and then his mind turned to Easter eggs. <sighs> Ooh, I love Easter eggs, thought Teddy. His favourite was a Cadbury's buttons. I wonder what your favourite is. It's much nicer to share your Easter eggs with a friend, thought Teddy but I haven't got one at the moment. All of a sudden, a blackbird flew down from a tree. Hello, blackbird, said Teddy. Will you come and play with me? Oh no, sang the blackbird. I haven't got time for that. It's almost Easter. I must go and build a nest. There's not much time. And with that, the little bird flew back up into a tree. Teddy was disappointed again. I wish I could help build a nest, said Teddy. It's good and kind. It's good to be kind and helpful to a friend. I wonder if you've ever done anything to help a friend. Perhaps you could share with a class what you did and who it was that you helped. That sort of thing is in your values, to be kind, helpful and thoughtful to others. Anyway, next, a brown rabbit came hopping along. Hello, what's your name, said Teddy. Firkin, said the rabbit. Will you play with me, Firkin? No, I can't. I wish I could, but Easter is really busy, especially if you're a rabbit. And with that, Firkin hopped through the garden edge, out into the field beyond, and he disappeared. <laughs> Not again, said Teddy to himself. Is there anyone who will play with me, he thought. And as he was thinking that, he saw something eating a nettle. A stinging nettle leaf. It was a small, hairy caterpillar. Hello, caterpillar, said Teddy. I'm feeling so lonely. Can you play with me? Yes, I can, said the caterpillar. That's great, said Teddy. He was so pleased. The caterpillar wriggled its way into Teddy's hand, crawled up his arm, onto his shoulder, up by his ear and onto his nose. Oh, you're tickling me, you're tickling me, said Teddy with a big smile on his face. Hooray, now I've got a prickly, tickly friend. Teddy was really happy. Every day, Teddy went to his friend, the caterpillar, whose name was Clive. He was always munching leaves in the nettle patch. The more Clive ate, the bigger he grew, the bigger he grew, the more he ate. And, the bigger he grew, the more tickly he became. And it made Teddy smile from ear to ear. They became great friends. Then one day, it was a sad day, Clive said, Teddy, I must go away now and do something very important. No, no, said Teddy, don't leave me. You're my best friend. Oh, don't be sad, said Clive. I promise you'll see me again. But I don't want you to go, said Teddy. I'll miss you so much. I promise I will come back and then you'll be happy, said Clive. With that, he began to spin a silky sleeping bag called a cocoon. He snuggled down inside the sleeping bag, pulled it over his head and disappeared from sight. Teddy went indoors feeling really sad. Why did Clive have to go, he thought. It's never going to be the same again. 
But inside the cocoon, Clive began to change. He wriggled out of his hairy body, and then he grew long legs and silky wings. Perhaps you can guess what's going on. And on Easter Sunday, he burst out of his cocoon, a beautiful, colourful butterfly. As the new butterfly was drying his wings in the sun, Teddy came back out into the garden. He looked inside the empty cocoon. Oh no, he said, where's Clive gone? And he felt tears roll down his face. The hungry birds must have eaten him. Oh, that's terrible. And then a voice said, look out behind you. Are you looking for me? Is that you, Clive? You look different, said Teddy. Yes, it's me. Teddy looked closely. It is you, he shouted. You've come back. But now you're a beautiful butterfly. That is amazing. What a fantastic surprise. A good friend always keeps his promise, said the butterfly, fluttering round Teddy's head. Shall we explore the Easter garden? Oh yes, said Teddy, jumping for joy. Let's go and find some Easter eggs. My friend has gone and now he's back. Hope you like that story. It reminds us of the first Easter when Jesus died on Good Friday. He was buried in a cave. His friends were sad because they missed him. They never wanted him to go away from them. Just like Teddy didn't want Clive to go away. Then, on the first Easter Sunday, Jesus came back to life. His friends looked in the cave, where his body was on the Friday, but it was empty. Then they saw Jesus, who had come back to life. Just like Teddy, Jesus' friends were full of joy. I'd just like to finish by saying a little Easter prayer for you. And with you, if you agree with the prayer, you can say Amen and you can make it your own then. Amen is just a word that means I agree. Dear God, Easter is such a happy time of the year. Everything is bursting into, the light, into life. Thank you for the blossom on the trees and the nest full of birds and the bright colours of spring flowers and butterflies' wings. Thank you, God, for our friends who help us to enjoy your beautiful world. But most of all, thank you for Jesus, who has promised to be our friend forever. And thank you that Jesus came back to life on Easter Day. Amen.